Y'all gonna be fine. Y'all don't need to look at it no more. Go ahead. Thank you. As long as it don't vibrate, I guess that might help us. Yeah. Yep. I've been embarrassed many times. Me <laughs> too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If y'all ready. <clears throat> Everybody ready? Okay. I'm seeing people still adjusting. Y'all good? Ready? Okay. Good morning. I'm Attorney Ben Crump, and I am here along with Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee and Congressman Al Green. We're standing with the brother of George Floyd, uh, Rodney Floyd, and the nephew of George Floyd, Brandon Williams. And we are coming to talk about how significant it was that the Department of Justice, under the direction of Attorney General Merrick Garland, bought federal criminal civil rights charges against the police officers in the killing of George Floyd. It is appropriate that we're here at the edge of CUNY Homes apartments where George was born and bred at, on the campus of Texas Southern University at their commencement talking about the hope for the future. Because we believe that these charges that were bought by the Justice Department encourages future generations to know that our Department of Justice will be here to make sure that all of American citizens are afforded the constitutional rights of life and liberty and equal justice. The fact that George Floyd's family was very grateful when Attorney General Merrick Garland called them to notify them, Congresswoman, that they were bringing these uh, indictments for the criminal civil rights against those officers for what they did to George Floyd. And it was very evident the first time you watched that video that they had violated the constitutional rights of George Floyd. Because at the very basis of our Constitution is the promise of constitutional rights to life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. And you knew, watching that video, that they had violated George Floyd's constitutional right to life when they prevented him from taking a breath for nine minutes and 29 seconds while those officers kept their knee on his neck and on his back. And so when you think about this indictment, you think not just about George Floyd. Yeah. But you think about the message this sends to other marginalized minorities who believe they were denied their due process, that they were denied their day in court. People like the family of Eric Gardner, people like the family of Breonna Taylor, and people like the family of Andrew Brown in his Elizabeth City, North Carolina, mm. who right now are battling with local officials to be transparent, to give them their due process and release the video of why he was shot in the back of the brain going away from the police. That's what this action by the Department of Justice means. It means that the Department of Justice is harkening back to the historical times when it was only the federal intervention that gave marginalized minorities, especially black people, protection that their constitutional rights would be respected. I know you all are going to have a lot of questions, but we're going to have uh, individuals give remarks, and then we'll talk about not only what these charges mean in your questions.
but also with the charge, the additional charge against Derek Chauvin for a kneeing and brutalizing that 14-year-old baby, what that means. But I think it's most appropriate that we hear from the representatives who represent Houston in the great halls of the United States Congress uh, who have been directly responsible for getting the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act passed. You know, Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee would not sleep until they got that passed. Congressman Al Green was steadfast in their commitment to say that we have to have meaningful legislation passed because Rodney's brother and Brandon's uncle, blood is on that legislation. So without further ado, I give you first my friend, my leader, a great stateswoman. I mean, they talk about her having a batter in her back for how hard she works for this community. We can have no final representative than the Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. Thank you very much, Attorney Crump. And uh, it is an honor to be able to uh, stand on hollow ground that is the nexus between CUNY homes and uh, the people of this community. There is great history. And first, I want to thank Attorney Benjamin Crump for, for providing uh, the most significant and powerful message to the 2021 graduating class uh, that was just heard a few minutes ago. I want to thank America's family, Brandon and Rodney, the George Floyd family that has suffered pain but has blessed us with their generosity and their fight and my colleague, the Honorable Al Green, for his collaboration and fight. Black people have had to depend in the course of history on outside forces other than themselves. The entire 20th century, in the backdrop of the freedom given in the 19th century, should have been the assimilation of black people into the culture and history and laws of this nation. It did not happen. We continue to suffer at the hands at the hands of ill-fated laws and wrong-acting people devastating conditions that resulted in our death. The most recent was our civil rights movement, when so many civil rights soldiers, if you will, died in the fight for justice. It was the Justice Department that allowed Martin King and John Lewis to march from Selma to Montgomery. Mm -hmm. Today, with Attorney Crump, my colleague, the Floyd family, we announce that the Department of Justice is open for business Amen. and lives will be saved. I was stunned. I was moved to tears when the federal indictment came out because I've known the mothers of Eric Garner, Trayvon Martin, Tamir Rice, and others who suffered without justice. This indictment is again to raise up the specter that the Constitution has a right and role in the violence against innocent persons, and you cannot engage in bad police conduct under color of law with impunity and get away with it. Amen. I want to make this point. This is about police misconduct, bad conduct. Because as we commemorate this month that honors law enforcement, we will not be tagged and tainted with an opposition to the laws of this land. But the indictment was so visual as it indicated 
that Officer Chauvin in particular was willful. And the reason, of course, is because at the end of six minutes, when it was apparent that George Floyd had no more life, Officer Chauvin did not move him, did not take him from his prone position, did not unleash him, did not seek to give medical care. And the indictment is a glaring statement that you cannot act under color of law. You cannot violate the civil rights. You cannot violate the Constitution when it comes to a fellow human being. That is where we are today. And it is the persistence of attorney Benjamin Crump not giving up on these cases that made General Garland in the immediacy of his confirmation to go and begin this process. This is not an easy process. A federal grand jury is not easy. And so in addition to Officer Chauvin, they've indicated that constitutional rights of George Floyd were violated by the other officers because they failed to render aid. Please understand, this is embedded in the Constitution. That's the distinction yes. between the state cases yes. and now the federal cases, which do not negate the state cases, and the state cases cannot negate the federal cases. Amen. The other counts, of course, included shocking to us, painful to us, that a teenager was grabbed by the neck, hit in the head with a flashlight, and then kneed in the back. Thank God he lived. Mm -hmm. But he, too, provides number one and number two counts. So where we are today is, as Attorney Ben Crump said, we have given light and hope to other families who have languished without relief. And I'm going to step a little bit out of my boundaries little bit out of my boundaries because Rodney I know the mothers that you have met mm -hmm. uh, you have seen how often Eric Garner's mother comes every time yes, and so I'm gonna raise the question with the Department of Justice hmm. as to revisiting cases like Eric Garner Tamir Rice mm. cases that have language Trayvon Martin uh, most of you think differently from me, but Trayvon Martin was under color of law because Mr. Zimmerman said that he was on a civil patrol. Hmm. He was under the jurisdiction of a governmental entity. Hmm. So this opens the door for at least having the ability to bring these cases to the Justice Department and ask for reconsideration on new facts, new precedent in the law new understanding of what happens when you're in need, new understanding about a teenager's fear, like Trayvon, a young boy in the dark of night. These cases should be looked at and others. And so I am grateful for this indictment because it means that as a member of Congress, I have no influence on the DOJ, but as a member of Congress, I can bring facts to the DOJ. Mm -hmm. And the DOJ now will look at those facts and make their own credible, independent decision that is a sense of hope. Yes. That is a sense of hope. Yes. Even for Robbie Tolan, yes. right here in Houston, Texas. So thank you to a now open DOJ. <laughs> knock, knock, the door is open. How grateful we are. This is a major, major decision. Thank you so much, Congresswoman, for proclaiming that the Department of Justice is open. <laughs> that is profound. Uh, now, we will hear from her colleague, uh, the great congressman who also hails here from Houston, Texas, who has been a stalwart in the fight for justice for George Floyd, Congressman Al Green. All right. Here, here. Thank you very much, Attorney Crump. Friends, the winds of change are blowing across this nation. The winds of change are blowing across the country as a result 
of one man whose daughter has said he would change the world, and that is exactly what's happening. Amen. The winds of change are blowing. They're blowing because we have Attorney Crump. I can say to you without question, reservation, hesitation, or equivocation, <laughs> he is the third good marshal of this generation because of his courage. He's got the courage. There are many other lawyers who see these injustices, but they don't have the intestinal fortitude. What Malcolm X called the chitlins to just stand up, to stand up against injustice. The winds of change are blowing because of Keith Ellison. Keith Ellison, the Attorney General. Make no mistake about it. For us, states' rights have been states' wrongs. Mm. Wow. We have always depended on the federal courts. We've always believed that if we could just get to the federal courts, we could get justice. Yeah. Yeah. Keith Ellison stands there with us in the state yeah. level. Yeah. We now see the winds of change. Yeah. The winds of change are blowing because that jury determined a guilty, guilty, guilty. There are many times when evidence was there, mm -hmm. but the jurors didn't have the courage. Didn't have the, courage. the winds of change are blowing across this country. The winds of change are blowing because Jackson Lee mm -hmm. refuses to let the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act go down in flames. She's down. still fighting. Amen. Still fighting for it. Amen. The winds of change are blowing across this country this family. God bless you, dear brother. Mm -hmm. How you have been able to do this with your dignity that you have. Mm -hmm. It means something yeah. to know that you have not only suffered and you're, you're suffering through the pain, but you have demonstrated to others how to behave under extraordinary circumstances with extraordinary pain. The winds of change are blowing across this country. And with these winds of change, we now have a justice department that understands that it doesn't end at the state level. The justice department can pick these cases up and let us have complete justice. Complete we have some justice, mm -hmm. and that's good, but we want total justice. Amen. We want justice for George Floyd but we also want justice for all of those who are potential George Floyds. If this change takes place, it's going to send a powerful message, Lord, a Lord. powerful message Lord. to those who believe they can act with impunity because they have the long arm of the law in their hands. I cannot tell you what this means to me. I'm 73 years old. Mm -mm. I've been waiting on this for a long time. Mm -hmm. And George Floyd's daughter, God bless her, our, her words are prophetic. Her father changed the world. As I feel this gentle breeze, mm -hmm. I know that the spirit of George Floyd is contained therein. therein. Because the winds of change are blowing across this country. Yes, they are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman. Uh, and before we hear brief remarks from uh, Rodney and Brandon, we have uh, Houston Councilwoman Evans Shabazz to briefly address you. Thank you so very much. I am so very honored to be here at Texas Southern University in Third Ward, Texas, where I just left the retouching of the mural in the street over on Alabama across from Jack Gates High School. And I'm so very honored to stand here with the Floyd family, my esteemed congressman and congresswoman, and certainly this gentleman here, Mr. Crump. And my sister told me to make sure that I told him that thank you for giving a voice to the voiceless. And so I'm going to say that, you know, we are fighting very, very hard to get these laws changed to bring equity, equality, and fairness. But we also have a great challenge in changing hearts of men. 
because the, the laws may be easy, but changing hearts is very difficult. Mm. And that is what is going to be required. The, certainly the laws will give consequences, but we certainly need to change the hearts to stop the actions. And so I'm here glad to stand with all of those that are here. I'm so very honored. I am a Texas Southern grad myself, a master's and doctorate. Mm. And so I know that he imparted some great words, especially to those that will be severely impacted yes, because Texas Southern University is predominantly African-American and Latino. And so certainly we're in the heart of Third Ward, Texas, and the words and the actions of my colleagues and this family who has stood strong, and I can't imagine how difficult that can be. I'm so very honored. I am Carolyn Evans Shabazz, and I am the council member for District D, which I call the District of Destination, mm -hmm. and it's for places such as this and the people in these areas that I speak. Amen. So thank you so very, very much. Thank you very much, Councilwoman. Now we will hear from uh, the brother of George Floyd who slept in the bed with them. I mean, across the street uh, in CUNY Homes, and Rodney, Polonis, Jaja, Latanya, uh, Bridget, Terrence, all his brothers and sisters and nephew Brandon, they continue to be so dignified as they continue to fight for justice, hold justice for George Floyd, Rodney Floyd. All right. So. Yesterday, when we, we received a phone call mm. from the Attorney General saying, and you can hear the sincerity in his voice, you can hear that he was very touched and moved by our brother's death and his police officer's conduct. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we, he spoke with us for about 15 minutes, I mean, and just explained to us that, hey, we got indictment charges going against these four officers, former officers. And, and it put a smile on our faces, I know, you know, just hearing how touched and moved he was that he's going to give, give this his all, 100%. Mm -hmm. He's going to hold these guys to their accountability. Mm -hmm. And we grew up right across the street from a Texas Southern University in the CUNY homes. And, and it's a big graduation day for these young men and women, and we're just happy and honored that we are invited here to this event. And I mean, it means a lot. Walking through this campus brings back memories of mm -hmm. passing through here as a child, as well as when I registered here when I was trying to enroll. And, and, and it's never <laughs> too late. Oh, it's never too late. <laughs> but I mean, honestly, see these faces of these wonderful men and women mm -hmm. getting ready to go out to this world. They just spent a lot of time studying and training for what they're about to do. Mm -hmm. And they're stepping into the world of two justice systems, mm. one for black African-Americans and one mm. for the white folks. Mm. And this right here is going to be very hard for them because this moment they all celebrating happy smiles with the family and want to go out into this world and do what they been wanting to do and training and going to school for. But it's going to be a lot of obstacles ahead of them. Yeah. But they do know that. And it's just, but it's a beautiful thing. They in good troubles. We all in good troubles together. Okay. And you know, she, Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee's been here for us every step of the way. Yeah. Brother Al Green, Thank you, every step of the way. Yeah. Mr. Bears, every step of the yeah. way. They one phone call away. They call us, give us advice. They, they tell us repeatedly. Our phone lines are open. They know this road. They know that they know this road better than the Floyd family know this road. Me and my brothers' wives. They've been yeah. down this road. They've been fighting so long. And Mr. Al Green said the best, 73 years old. He's been waiting for a moment like this. And we, and unfortunately it had to come and we all had to meet in my brother's death, but we, we definitely would have met eventually in the way it go. <laughs> but the, the fight these men and women have in them, hey, we're gonna keep on fighting for our people, for equality. Yes, sir. Good job. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And, uh, and uh, now you will hear from a young man who uh, talked to George on a daily basis mm. 
uh, because George was like a father to him. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Brandon Williams, his nephew. Brandon. Mm -hmm. I just want to say thank you to everybody that's up here standing with us. Uh, Congressman Al Green, always there. We appreciate you, as well as Mr. Bass. Uh, I call Miss Miss Jackson Lee Auntie. She's always there. <laughs> Random text two in the morning some nights. Uh, yes, always there. Even comes even comes to eat with the family. So she's definitely a part of the family. But we appreciate everything that you do. Amen. Uh, and of course, we call Ben the Michael Jordan of civil rights. Come on now. That's what our family calls him. Yeah. Always there. Yeah. Always hard working, always on the front line fighting yeah. for the cause. Yeah. I think uh, everybody around the world appreciates you. So thank you, brother. Love you, brother. Um, but mm, on a lighter note, uh, it feels good to be here. We grew up right across the street in the CUNY homes. Um, uh, that's where we were raised. We were a big family. Uh, I grew up with Rodney, and George was always like a father figure to me. Uh, we slept in the same bed, and there was a lot of play fights and things of that nature. So uh, it, it's real significant to be here right, uh, you know, right at home. Yeah. But I think... Um, the main reason we're here for yesterday on that call, uh, it was it, it meant the world. We were, we were very grateful for it. Um, if you saw that video, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it's yeah. self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. uh, we all know that uh, it was a murder and a torture in broad daylight. Yeah. We all know that the civil rights were violated. But for some reason, with video footage, evidence, and everything supporting exactly what we saw, we somehow never get these charges. Okay. And for what reason? That's to be, uh, you know, that, that that's to be identified later. But we are grateful. In other situations, you know, um, you see similar things and no charges are brought. Uh, I'm gonna go back to um, the day we heard the guilty verdict. Yeah. I was actually on Facetime as the judge read the verdict. And I was on Facetime with Miss Tamika Palmer, the mother of Breonna Taylor. Mm -hmm. And, and it's one thing that stuck out about that conversation, well, two, the fact that she cried, and she cried really hard for us. Wow. Um, we, we're connected with them, but as the judge read the verdict, she said that she was happy for us. She said that I'm happy for y'all. And, and I stopped her, I told her, no, you're happy for us. This is a moment for America. That's right. mm -hmm. This is a moment for you too. Mm -hmm. um, this gives you hope. And she said that, she said that she had hope. Mm -hmm. And she was proud because you know, um, what happened to her daughter wasn't right. And, and we, st we, we, we're still yeah. fighting for charges for Breonna Taylor. Yes. So, in a sense, this was for America. Yeah. And immediately after the guilty verdict, we held a press conference similar to this. Mm -hmm. And one thing that stuck out to me was something I said. And I never rehearse or write down anything I say. And my exact words were, so when I say today is a pivotal moment, it's a chance for America to take a turn in the right direction mm -hmm. and right a lot of wrongs so that we don't keep adding to these names. Come on. Mm -hmm. I don't Good. Thank you, Randy. You know, and, and when I said that, that's exactly what I meant. It shouldn't be another George Floyd. I lost a man that was like a dad to me. Mm, he was a also a father to children. He yes, has an eight-year-old daughter. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, uh, he has brothers that, you know, they would just love to call. You know, a lot of days I find myself having tough days, and I usually call him just for life advice or to just laugh about a sports game, and, and I can't do that. No family should go through what we went through. It's unacceptable. When is it gonna stop? Amen. But this gives us hope. This lets us know that there is change on the way right. mm -hmm. if we keep right. pressing and mashing the gas for people in leadership to pass laws. We need better police and we need police reform. It's no way that the color of your skin or your race dictates how you are policed when in police custody. That's absolutely unacceptable, but I'll close out on that note. No, that was absolutely superb. Okay. We, we have a, uh, time for like four questions and then the family that's have to get to the next graduation. Any questions? Uh, if we answered it all, that's... Okay. Yeah. The hope is that it will set a precedent that the Justice Department, as Congresswoman Jackson Lee and Congressman Green said, will look at these other injustices.
that these families never got their day in court. They were denied due process. It's, it's one thing to have a jury uh, acquit an uh, officer for killing your loved one. It's an entirely, entirely different thing to never, ever be able to say that we didn't even matter enough to get a day in court. And so that's what this is hopeful of. I think it will tell these officers in Minnesota that not only do you have to get acquitted from the state charges, but you have to know that the federal charges are coming right behind it. So I, I pray that it ensures full justice for George Floyd. If I may just add uh, to this will go through the same trial process of the state system. You have an indictment. There will be a trial before a federal judge, and they will have to subject themselves to a jury and or a judge trial tried by the most powerful law firm in the nation, and that is the Department of Justice, and that's what we have not had. We have not had that powerful arm of the federal government holding the Constitution, standing by the flag, when we've had to go into the court uh, to be able to have our rights addressed. It happened in the Civil Rights Movement. It has not happened for a long time. And the last thing I hope, I wrote this week about profiles and courage. I hope it means that we'll pass the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act in Washington, and they'll pass it in Austin and name it after George Floyd. Amen. Last question, because we've got to get to the graduation. Anything? Floyd's family. Uh, Very briefly. Mm -hmm. Was that phone Uh, we, we we had a little <laughs> we were, we were updated and notified like an hour before, like an hour before. <laughs> uh, we didn't know it came out of left field but we were very grateful and excited and um like Rodney said it was a very sincere phone call um and, and we were grateful for it okay thank you thank you we got to get to the graduation I, we got to walk. I got it too somebody we got to walk we got to get to the graduation